How's it going guys? Welcome to FTO News. There is no news today. I can talk about Daredevil. But I don't want to talk about it until next week. Until it's been out for an entire week. I can talk about Fast and Furious 7. But I haven't seen it yet. Hopefully tonight. Fingers crossed I'm going to see that movie tonight. What I want to talk about is my top 5 comic books that have changed my life. Screw everyone else's. I'm talking about this guy. My top five comics of all time! That was a mouthful. Number one! This comic book came out in 1996. Mark Wade and Alice Ross did it. It changed my life. If you guys know what I'm talking about, jump for joy. Because I know a lot of you old school readers know exactly what I'm talking about. It's Kingdom Come. I love this comic. When I was a kid, I called it the Bible. Because that's what it was to me. It was the freaking Bible. Because the future telling a Superman and the Justice Society and the Teen Titans and the Outsiders and everything else in the DC Universe. It was awesome. The art was amazing. Absolutely beautiful. I don't want to tell you too much of the story, but it pretty much goes on this little journey with this, this older preacher man. As a specter says, we got to make a choice. I want you to see what happens when I go on this adventure while all this destruction is about to happen. So Superman is exiled. Superman is exiled for, I think it's about 15 years, 20 years, and all of the kids, and I say 15 or 20 years, I know I call it the Bible, but if I read that comic book too many times, it won't be as cool. I can't read something that I love or watch something that I love over and over again because it takes away from the coolness of it. So forgetting some parts of it, then going back and reminding myself like, oh shit, that was awesome. I love doing that. That's my, that's my thing. I'm watching something over and over again and memorizing every line and every part of it. Why would I do that to myself? I love this thing. Oh, I want to keep on burying myself inside of it. Back to the story. Superman is exiled for about 15, 20 years and it's awesome because he goes off to, like, to Kansas, but Kansas has been blown up by Captain Adam and there's radiation everywhere, so you can't really go to Kansas. So Superman got his little dome and cattle and something bad happens. Something real bad happens. Something so bad happens that Diana, Wonder Woman, has to come and say, Superman, you got to come back. Shit's fucking up. You got to come back and help us out. And Superman says, fuck off. You guys wanted this other guy to be a superhero, and Lois is dead. So you guys can just fuck right off. And it's awesome! That's all I can tell you about the story without ruining too much. I've already said too much. But read this story, because it is a mind-blown trip. And the art to it, Mark Wade is a good writer. Back then, he was not as strong as he is now. There's some couple of slow parts inside the story, but here's the cool thing. Alice Ross slow like Alice Ross picks up where Mark Wade stumbles. So when his story gets a little dry and a little boring, you look at that art, it's like, holy shit. It, this wow. That's why he's my favorite artist. Alice Ross is my favorite artist. Second favorite, Jim Lee second favorite artist and when they did a collab together when they did like a little mesh of their art style together that was <sighs> if I had died that day I would have been a very happy man number two since we're talking about Jim Lee we gotta talk about the 2000 comic book Hush this comic book got me back in the comic books when I told everybody to fuck off so I'm inside a grocery store and I see Hush. I'm like, what in the hell is Hush? This is like before the internet got really big. So you couldn't just go online and see like forums and crap like, oh, there's a new comic book coming out. No. You walk along, you see this comic book, Hush. And it's Jim Lee. I'm like, the dude that did X-Men and Wildcats? Yeah, that same Jim Lee. So I picked this up, started reading inside of it, Jeff Loeb is doing the writing inside of like okay gotta get this there's a little contest inside of it too if you get to figure out who Hush really is you want a prize from DC comic books I'm like yeah definitely gotta read this everyone everyone thought it was Jason Todd everybody thought it was Jason Todd 
And how about I tell you the story? The story is Batman's out on patrol. He, he actually he's not on patrol. Batman's out and about looking for this kid. Killer Croc shows up and he's more big and mutated than he was before. And Batman says, How the hell is Killer Croc so damn big? How is he so giant and mutated? He captured Killer Croc, puts him away, asks him, What the hell happened to you? Killer Croc doesn't tell him shit. Not a fucking word. So Batman leaves the facility that Killer Croc is held in. Bat, the bat rope, the grappling rope, gets cut, he falls down, bumps his fucking head, he has to get surgery. Tommy Elliot shows up, gives him surgery. I'm like, who the fuck is Tommy Elliot? So you find out Tommy Elliot is like his Bruce Wayne's childhood friend when his parents are still alive. If I tell you any more of the story, it would actually ruin it for you, but that's how, that's how it all starts out, it's just like that. Read this fucking comic. That's why Jeff Loeb, for like 10 years, was my favorite writer. All up until he went exclusively to Marvel, he was my hands down favorite writer. So reading that Superman, Batman comic book, awesome. Get Jeff Loeb is the shit. Well, Jeff Loeb was the shit. Bad things happened to Jeff Lowe that I don't want to talk about, and it kind of changed him a little bit, but he was an amazing comic book writer. The art is by Jim Lee. Like I said, we just talked about Jim Lee, and you see why he's my favorite artist in this. All the different covers of Hush were amazing. All the different characters popping in and out, even more amazing. If you know nothing about the Batman world of the pre-52 universe, Read this comic book. It's like a crash course for anyone who knows, know, who wants to know about Batman because you will learn about Batman, all his other past stories, about Two-Face, Rachel Ghoul, Harley Quinn, Joker, Killer Croc, Jason Todd, Clayface, Huntress. You're going to find out about all these fucking characters in just 12 issues and wow. Even Superman and Catwoman pop up in this comic book. Poison Ivy, I just keep on going and going. Even Scarecrow shows up, I need to stop. I need to stop. Read this comic book. It's one of my personal favorites. Ha ha ha. All right, number three, House of M. This one here was epic to me because when I read this, I had to get in. I said, okay, DC, it's time to take a little break from you. I want to start reading me some Marvel. And I read this and holy hell. The main story was good by Brian Michael Bendis and Oliver Capulli. It was awesome. It was, it was really good, but I cared more about those damn tie-ins, like the Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, Excalibur, Exiles, those were the shit. Because the main story was cool, but it was all about Magneto and like his fucking reign of power and Wolverine getting his memory back, like, uh, that's cool. But I want to I wanted to see how these people are interacting in the world. That's just how it was with the Age of Apocalypse. When I read Age of Apocalypse, the main story was cool, but the tie-ins, the tie-ins were where it was at, man. You get to see all these people living their lives in this shit cover world in both Age of Apocalypse and House of M. If you weren't a mutant in House of M, you were a piece of shit. Period. If you weren't a mutant, you were a piece of shit. And it's like a reversal of everything we know about the Marvel Universe. And I couldn't stop reading this. And Spider-Man was the most interesting because he was pretending to be a mutant when, when most of the people who knew him Knew he was just a human who got bitten by a radioactive spider. This was so damn awesome. If you have not read this and you know how cool my Brian Michael Bendis is, read this comic. Read the tie-ins. If you want to just read like the main story too, it's only eight issues. Go ahead and do so, but honestly, you're going to be disappointed with the ending because everything gets bloop, put right back to normal. So... Go, go crazy if you want to go crazy, but telling you, you want like something that, that sticks with you, read the tie-ins, because holy hell, the tie-ins are so, so good. Really awesome. Whew, we're getting there. We're closing in. Number four. Oh, this one came out in 2005, and huh, I was feeling like in my Marvel thing, like Marvel's being cool, doing weird, new, different things, and it was so awesome. And then they came out with something called The New Avengers. Brian Michael Bendis also did this. I didn't pay attention to his name back then. Like I knew he did a House of M, but like, okay, let's see what else he can do. Because House of M, like I said, pissed me off towards the end. Just put everything right back to normal. So, New Avengers came out. David Finch did the art to it. 
and it's like so gritty and crazy and dark. And you saw, I saw Luke Cage in the fucking group. So Spider Woman, Spider Man, Iron Man, Captain America, like what in the hell is this team? I've never seen a team like this before because it just, it seems like just a bunch of misfits on the Avengers. And then I read this, it starts out with Peter Parker living with Iron Man and Aunt May and Mary Jane was living with them and their first mission was to the Savage Land. I'm like, okay, um, do we, do we have to go to the Savage Land? Because I really, I really don't want, I really don't want to go to the Savage Land right now. So I'm reading it. I don't like the Savage Land. It's just, yeah, but, you know, time I, I, I like, because Kazar and shit like that, yeah, I don't care. Magneto and Sinister, yeah, couldn't care less. I know other people love this, I do not care about this. It's so fucking boring on the Savage Land. But yeah, Spider-Man, Captain America, Spider-Woman, Iron Man, they all went to the Savage I don't think Iron Man was there. But they all went to the Savage Land. And when they went there, they got into a fight with some of like, the, the creatures and people on the Savage Land. They all got caught. I was like, okay, uh, the Savage Land is a lot more tough than I thought it was. <laughs> and what happens next is, you see like Captain America, Spider-Man, all of them tied up with their hands above their head, ass naked. And they're all making jokes about them being naked. And it's like hilarious. They're all making jokes, Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, like doing back and forth. And like you see Captain America just listening to them, just like talking back and forth to each other. And then Sauron shows up, you know, the big pterodactyl flying dude who sucks people energy to make himself stronger. That's a weird power, I know. But he shows up, and the first thing Captain America says is, you're under arrest. While he's naked, hanging in the air. That, that did it for him. Like, okay, this is the coolest fucking comic book I've ever read. And then only, then like 15 issues later, Civil War started. And I would have loved the Civil War if I hadn't been told that Captain America dies inside Civil War. And if they have ruined every damn Marvel comic book I was reading. So my Caitlin Deadpool, ruined. My New Avengers, ruined. Everything that wasn't X-Men was damn ruined for me. So I said Civil War can kiss my ass. So that is not going to be on the list. Just letting all you guys know. Oh, we're almost done. Number five. It's the last one. And this one here came out in 2008. DC Comics, I'm trying to see if you guys can guess it before I say it. Dwayne McDuffie, Ebenis, it's Justice League. Justice League of America, yeah. I know I could have said some cool honorable mentions like Justice. Oh, oh my goodness, Justice was good. Superman and Batman, we talked about that one already. Could have said Why the Last Man. Could have said Pride of Baghdad. I love that comic book. I don't care what anybody says. I love that comic book. Just my comic book, my choice is Justice League of America, Dwayne McDuffie, one of his last comic books before he passed away. And this one here, this is this is how I saw my Justice League. Like every time I see Justice League, this is how I see it. It starts out with like Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman trying to pick out the new Justice League team. Like, we need a new Justice League. Shit's been going bad. Fucking the whole Mass of the Lord thing, one woman snapping necks. Like, we gotta, we gotta change our image because shit is going bad. So, they get a whole new crew of people. They get Vixen, Red Arrow, Black Lightning. They get Hot Girl. They get all these cool, like, just, you guys seen that picture lying around? Like, with them all taking a picture and smiling and, like, arms up on each other. Like, eh. you, you, everyone's seen that picture before. It's a cool picture, that's Ed Bennis. He's awesome, and the story too is just, it's so good. It's like, it's not just like awesome, but it's good. Like, they're, you see how good people these people are, and the fact that Roy redeems himself after being a junkie, after being an arsenal, after like his kid, after all that crap that goes on, it's just, they still accept him. Like, they're still a family. All of them are still a family. Even after Identity Crisis, they're still all just cool with each other. It's just, it's a good comic book. It's a good comic book. It's so good. It's just, it's really, really good. 
I should say that this is in no particular order, just by year. I'm not going doing favorites because I couldn't do favorites. I couldn't do which one of those five of my favorites. I couldn't. Like, I want to say Kingdom Come, but I like McDuffie's run in Justice League, and then New Avengers really spoke to me. I'm like, no, I, no favorites. No favorites. Read Justice League of America, Dwayne McDuffie, run. The Lightning Saga was awesome inside Justice League. The whole beginning, like Justice League issue number one to like 25 is awesome. Anything after that is don't waste your time. After McDuffie leaves, stop reading Justice League because it, it turns into shit. The Lightning Saga though, oh, the Lightning Saga is awesome. Really awesome. Power Girls leading the Justice Society of America. She's shacking up with Hawkman. And then Red Arrow is shacking up with Hawk Girl. Like, who the hell saw that coming? Because I didn't see that coming. And, like, the Legionnaires are all trapped in the past. And they got to go find each Legionnaires who've forgotten who the hell they are, mind you. The Lightning Saga is awesome. I know my Duffy didn't do, like, the entire run of the Justice, Justice League of America when it first started out, but. His part of it, you know, the way they knew the Lightning Saga, was awesome. I think it was, uh, Brad Nelser? Yeah, he did the beginning of it. Also, super awesome, super awesome stuff. Really damn good. Read Justice League of America. Ah, uh, yes. That's it. That's all I got. Artist of the day is every single artist I just talked about in all these comic books. Those are your artists of the day. If you don't know those artists, look them up. I'll leave a link or you can go find out so many different artists. Check out these websites. Check out these comic books. Marvel has all this stuff on their Marvel app. So you can just go read it. Comicology has some of this stuff. Go to your local retailer. Go to your comic book shops. Talk to these guys. If they're dicks, call them out on it. Because they won't know what to do when you call them out being a dick. I give you my word. Be cool to your comic book guys. Because you don't be cool with them, you won't know about the good stuff that's coming out. <laughs> I like Ultimate 3. That's it. Take it easy.